All right, YouTube, today I'm going to be talking about my workflow and how to create this mega cool sound. Stay tuned. Uh, hello, YouTube. I hope you can hear me. Uh, let me just say something real quick. Yeah, that's quite loud. Um, anyway, um, I have been getting a lot of responses on my videos lately, and uh, it's been really good because uh, I know the like the EDM community is still kind of like growing a lot on YouTube. It is quite big now. It's bigger than it was in 2014 when I pretty much started making music and um, yeah the response I've been getting on some of my sounds has been really great so I wanted to show you something else which is like one of my most valuable secrets right now and I at first I didn't really want to share it because I, I you know it's even every, every now and then you found something out and you're like this is that this kind of defines my sound so I'd like to keep it for myself but that's actually a really bad mindset to have I think because uh, like I, for me to have found this stuff took me four years. I mean, I, I've been making music since the end of 2014. It's now 2019, so it's been a good, it's been a good uh, four, four and a half years, pretty much. Um, so yeah, it took me a long time to figure out how to make stuff like this. And I'd like to share that Patcher is pretty much one of my staples these days, um, because I make most of my sounds in in Patcher. I, I, um, the cool thing about Patcher is it's a it's a plugin in which you can put other plugins. So if you make all of your presets in Patcher, it makes the whole workflow a lot sim simpler. And you can see I have a, a file called Patcher Presets in which I pretty much, every time I make a sound, I save it. So it makes your, your workflow a lot easier because when you're composing songs and making stuff like that, it, it, um, it makes the whole workflow a lot easier because you can just literally like drag and drop sounds in. If I want something ab ambient, I can literally like drag drag in my citrus saws and I instantly have something ambient, you know? So it's it's uh, it's cool to have your plugins for each and every, uh, I mean, your presets for each and every plugin you use, but I find it much easier and much simpler to tr just make a bunch of categories and do everything in Patcher because you can just put all of your your plugins in there and you can put multiple plugins in and you can uh make uh, knobs you can literally like create it's only like it's almost like build a bear but build a vst <laughs> so and then you can link these knobs to different parameters like i linked it to this parameter for this parametric eq and i created this growl sound uh and it's pretty much only has one serum sound but it's it's quite interesting and as I go on with the different sounds I make, uh, cause I, I have categories as ambient, FM sounds, growls. And you literally create your, your own library of sounds. And it, it makes me feel a, a lot, like a lot easier on myself because I hate using presets that other people have made because I, I, I like understanding what the sound is made of and like feeling responsible for the sounds I make. Um, yeah, so I, I prefer to focus on my own sound design and it's given me a lot more freedom lately because my composing, the composing side of the things that I do is not that advanced yet. I'm still working on, I it, I pretty much learned about 8-bar loops in 2015 and now I'm still working on composing and I'm learning about choruses and build-ups and all that stuff. And it's it's come a long way. But uh, I regard uh, this 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 part of my workflow here as a really big part because now I don't have to focus on the sound design I, I pretty much separated the sound design part from the composing part of my music, which helps a lot, I, I, I must say. Um, so I save all these little packages of, of stuff I already made, and I, I don't have to put any effects on them because the effects are already built in. If I want to put in uh, something that, that caps it off, a limiter, because I use Maximus a lot for limiting stuff, and I put a Maximus, you'll see in pretty much all of these, except this one, at, at the end of my signal path, there's a Maximus because I, I limit everything in the end. Um, just so it uh it doesn't uh clip because dubstep sounds are a lot of a lot of times are really loud but you don't want them to clip because if you look like it if you look at the waveform of a dubstep sound if you are like a dj and you look at the waves waveforms of a dubstep sound a lot you notice that it looks like a sausage <laughs> pretty much <laughs> so most of my dubstep sounds start with a citrus and some sort of waveform is pretty much the staple right there. And I put in a bunch of effects already in it. This is why uh, 
I think Serum is so popular lately is because it has all these built-in effects. And if you use something like Patcher, you can put an infinite amount of effects. I can start creating, because this is all my generator sounds, generator like ASTs, and these are all the effects to the right here. So if I want to have another EQ in here, I can just drag one in there. And if I want another one, I just go ahead and drop as many as I want. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And the thing with Serum is it only has one of each. It only has one distortion uh, effect and only one EQ effect and one compressor, which is like OTT, by the way. This is a really va valuable part right here. But um, if I want to do multiple versions of the compression, if I want to split the signal, I can literally split it here and add another compressor, and then the, both these sounds are combined in the end, um, which helps a shit ton. So and and it's all you save all the sounds you make in this neat little package. I think in the the most you can do in something like Ableton is pretty much save the uh the effect rack you have and you can do it in FL Studio as well, but I really think Patcher is probably the most powerful part of FL Studio and I pretty much I, I've been using Patcher for a while, but only lately I've I've discovered how powerful it really is, especially for your workflow. So uh, let me show you something like how I approach making a dubstep sound. So let me get rid of all of these and we're going to create a sound right now and I'm going to save it. It's pretty much going to be my tutorial sound. So this might turn out great, might not turn out too great, but I usually save pretty much everything I make and the workflow has been so ingrained in my mind right now. It's not even, it's not even difficult right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a serum. <laughs> this is pretty much how most of my stuff st starts. So, uh, if you want to get that vowely sound, if you want to get the the harmonics on the on the um, the spectrum to get moving, probably the best way is to get a nice waveform. And I pretty much, I think I've I've imported a lot of stuff. Like the massive um, waveforms are are pretty nice. And what you want to do is you want to, I I usually already make the sound so that if I press a key on the keyboard. This is like my standard sounds. I, I wa already want the sound to be as low as it needs to be. It's a little bit too ma metallic and you don't see too many uh, harmonics moving up there. So what you want to see is you want to see all those little lines move from left to right or in, in different directions or in, in opposite directions. So getting something vowel -y is 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 pretty much necessary. So if you want to make this process quicker, you just link an, FLO, an LFO here. It's a little bit vowel -y. Most of these sounds are a little bit too... Uh, <coughs> uh, too... Uh, not organic enough, I would say. And then always there's modern talking. Okay, so let's use modern talking just for shitsies. You get a nice, like, a movement there in the vowels. So I think a little bit of distortion might... Let's try and not make it sound like modern talking. Like... I tell you what, let's, let's do this. We, we take a small part of uh, modern talking and we use the bend plus minus. I use this a lot. This is a little bit more squelch into the sound, and I don't have it. And then what we can do is we can use a uh, EQ to give a little bit more voweliness to this. And what I usually do is I use the compressor, but I use it in multiband mode because it pretty much uh, crushes across the spectrum. It pretty much crushes all of the frequencies. So it brings out all of those, those frequencies you can't hear that well. Like the upper end of the sound is not, not as pronounced, but I would like to pronounce it more. I always wondered why uh, my dubstep sounds sound so weak. Or I don't know how to say it. Not, not as uh, vibrant or... Not as bright 
and I, I ended up using the compressor for most of that stuff to make if, if the sound doesn't sound powerful enough put a compressor on there you're accentuating pretty much all of the frequencies across the spectrum <laughs> That sounds pretty cool. So what I usually do at this point is I think I have enough effects here. Um, usually I don't do something like reverb inside here because I know I'm going to be adding more effects to this to this chain right here. Um, I might do something like a filter, something like delay in, re in reverb is something I'll, I'll do later. Maybe something like unison. <laughs> But not too much because that makes it sound a little bit weird. And and also uh, also something to keep in mind is with the unison is uh, not to not to keep this unison too high. If you put a lot of voices and you put it almost in mono, it gives it a little bit of a fuller sound. So it doesn't sound too wide. a little bit more robotic unison <laughs> I don't know how to, how to say. But already we have created something quite unique with modern talking right now. So what I usually do is I like playing with... Because um, part of what creates that dubstep sound is the vowels, the, the harmonics moving all over the place. Like that. So what I like doing is I like doing that uh, kind of like synthetically. I don't know how else to explain it as I usually put some sort of band in here, bring it up a little bit, and then if you play the sound, which is not playing at all, this has a weird glitch where if you sometimes put it in an EQ, it doesn't let the sound through. So I have sort of connected and reconnected, and suddenly the sound works. So if you take something like this, and you take this uh, parameter right below the notch, or what are these called? These are called not notches, they're called bands. Okay, whatever, yeah. You'll notice if you play with these. And I'd like to control most of these these parameters themselves. So what I also do inside of Serum these days is I go and I, I change all of these um, LFOs or all of these sources to the same macro knob. Because I've pretty much given them, given them the, the right amount of ratios here everywhere that I'd like. So... <laughs> I've pretty much done everything I want to. So I think I might do something like um, put a filter on the end and pretty much make it quiet all the way. And then add this here. So every time I, I go up, it brings the sound in. So um, what I like doing then is within Patcher, you can activate uh, some of the inputs and if you you can use that same thing where the last tweaked one you can use if you use FL studio a lot You know that last tweaked is a good thing. So I activate the last tweaked uh, Parameter it gives you this little red dot, which is basically like automation. So you by default get one surface uh, plugin in in in, pl in in patcher and with this you can add a knob uh, How do I do this again right here? Um, you can add something like this a knob and you can actually customize these knobs which are bloody amazing actually um, I usually just change the colors of whatever but you also get like I, I don't know why I'm doing this it has nothing to do with the sound design but I just get something that looks nice and that I like which like, kind of fits the sound I don't know this is the artistic side artistic side of me coming out so a, a, as soon as you add a knob in here you get an another little bit of automation here and if you connect these two to each other You can control the sound with this knob. And you have all kinds of other things you can add in here. You can add check boxes for like Boolean functions, I guess. And uh, labels. I can add a label in here that says, uh, I don't know, mega, mega tutorial, tutorial sound. And then it does nothing. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's the name. What I want to change is the actual label, the caption. 
mega awesome tutorial sound whoopty fucking do pretty awesome and then you can just click the sound and actually that has a name knob one so we can actually go in here change the I, this is actually way off topic but <laughs> this is the wob button <laughs> the more you turn it the more wob you get like <coughs> this is way too mono i want to actually create this unit a little bit, a little bit more like that And we already have a pretty freaking decent sound here. So I don't know. This this is actually my workflow right now for most of the sounds I make. I don't want to make this tutorial too long because uh, uh, I don't write, like too long tutorials. I like being able to like the sounds that I do, uh, like video tutorials on YouTube. I like if I have a specific sound for a YouTube tutorial that is that shows me how to make it. I like that video and I'd like to keep them separate. But this is a really good. This is more of a workflow video, I guess. So. Uh, I just want to show with this button. I can activate this and actually uh, connect it to this button as well. And when I turn the button, it does absolutely nothing for some reason. Did I activate the right button? It is activated. Oh, it's 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 uh, connected to the wrong parameter down here. It has to be connected to the to the knob as well. So if you keep your eye on this. You'll notice the ratio for this is not too good, but I'll, pr I'll, I'll probably cover in another video. I created this uh, this AMT controller. This is this is some coding in it, so it's actually a little bit more difficult. Uh, and a guy, there's one guy on YouTube that has a video where he made you know, outputs controllers activate out. So you can create the ratio just like you do with the ratio knobs in like these in in. Uh, and serum you can do the same with these AMT knobs and I usually like keeping an eye on this but it doesn't want to show me two yeah two patches at the same time so this is the starting point I want to make it pretty high and this is the end point I'm gonna make it pretty not as high and I guess the C is the output so if you look at this it actually moves this. does absolutely nothing <laughs> I'm so good at this. I haven't actually done this in a while, but I saw the comments and I actually wanted to go ahead and try this again. Um, because I want to make you guys a... I do not understand what's going on here. At all. Parameter A. Maybe it's... No, I think it's parameter C. I want to actually activate. So let's put this to C and deactivate this one. Uh, I think I'm doing it right now. This is actually a, a whole other video, this thing, because it's it's a little bit more complicated stuff. Because you have to add in this formula, but I just saved it with the formula, which is nice. Ah, uh, boy oh boy, I hope this works. Because I'm stupid. Nope, it's not working at all. Anyway, yeah. You could use that. Uh, you could actually use something like the... Uh boy, what did I do? Oh shit, now we have nothing. <laughs> uh yeah, so okay. Yeah, well you get what I mean. <laughs> uh you could use something like uh what is it, the envelope controller? It's for amounts, I guess. You could actually activate the first articulator and I guess control the the amount with this one. But yeah, anyway. So yeah, uh, I'll cover the the AMT controller later, I guess. Let me just give it one more go. I swear I can figure this out. So the amounts are just not as pronounced. You just <laughs> I have no idea why this is not working. I I guess I have the wrong input. Let's deactivate this one. I guess A is not working. Let's try B. If that's the right parameter. Nope, B is definitely not. So let's try C. C is our golden boy right now. Let's try that. <coughs> I guess this is the amount though. I have no idea.
idea why this is not working. Anyway, this video is way too long by now. <laughs> uh, we're, to, we're getting at 20 minutes right now. So, but th this is basically my workflow these days is combining a lot of stuff, combining effects, doing a lot of stuff in Serum. And then even if I have a sound like this, I usually maybe even sa save it as another preset or I can bring another sound in here, uh, something like Serum again. And I use one of the stuff I made, like the school base. It's actually one of my first sounds. And I can activate the the macro or just move it once. And then go to inputs, parameters, and activate it. Right there. Now you have one knob controlling both. Oh, actually, nope, this is the wrong one. I'm going to create the knob. Like that. And now I have two very loud sounds, and this is a good time to bring in something like Maximus. And add this in here. And just cap it off right there so it doesn't cr limit or doesn't crash or whatever. Doesn't crush. Not crash. And now you have a very interesting sound. And you can modify it uh, more. Get rid of that horrible delay. Make the sound lower. And now you have... Something really terrifying. Yeah, so that's pretty much how I <laughs> approach most of the sounds I make these days. So, yeah, I guess this has been a pretty good tutorial, I guess. And... Um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed Patcher. Patcher is a really powerful thing, and you should look into it because it's really, it's next level. So I can literally go and save this preset now as, save preset as, yeah, save it as mega awesome tutorial sound. And literally go to my Patcher presets folder, save it right there. And now I have it right here. So if I want to have this sound again, maybe modify it a little bit, there it is again. And I can get to get rid of the original one, And but it's the exact same sound. So yeah, that's pretty much how I approach my sounds these days, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Get, get into Patcher, try it out, and know a lot of VSTs and throw them all in there. Jumble it up. Put it in a blender and drink it, I guess. <laughs> so, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.